What you want to do is they are in 30 degrees of flexion, 30 degrees of abduction, a little bit of external rotation. Okay, so that's our resting position. And what I might do here is stabilize my foot against the table, and I'm just pulling back like this. Let's say he has knee pain, okay? Because is this, this tractions the ligaments of the mm -hmm. knee as well. Yeah. So some patients can't tolerate this. So what you can do is you can just bring his leg up, relax, and all I'm doing is I'm just coming in like this, and I'm pulling here, and I'm just doing my glide this way. Mm. So I'm kind of using my shoulder as a fulcrum. I glide inferiorly, and I'm just pulling up like that. I'm putting them at 30 and 30, coming up close here. So you've got to get up near the acetabulum or near the head of the femur, and just pushing inferiorly. So that's my inferior glide. Um, relax your leg. See, now the belt is essentially holding his leg up, and again, I can just push straight down. It's a lot easier. <laughs> okay, the belt makes life a lot easier. You're okay with that? I can even go two-handed. Now, again, we need to make sure he's in resting position, so his knee has to be below the table, okay? So we want that 30 degrees here. Come off. I'm coming right under the gluteal fold, and that's my anterior glide. And you just have to make sure if you use the gait belt, you are not over his patella. Okay, relax your leg. His leg could be straight, it could be bent, it doesn't really matter. And I can be doing it just like this. Okay? So post-surgically, when you guys evaluate patients, whether it's a knee replacement, ACL reconstruction, anything like that, you need to look at the patellofemoral joint and see how well it's moving. So it's very simple. You basically just want to move that kneecap to one side. I, normal mobility is one half the width of the patella. So if her patella is this wide, I should see this much mobility um, when I glide her, her knee this way. And it, she's got plenty of mobility there. And then I'll glide it this way as well. Plenty of mobility there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to compare medial glide on this side to medial glide on this side. And she's a little restricted. Are you having any pain or problems? Okay. So she's a little restricted on the left compared to the right. We'll do a lateral glide. So here's our lateral glide. Okay. I could come around here and push, but I can just use my hands here and push. She's fine going laterally. Okay. A little click, but no big deal. I can push it inferiorly. And you have to be careful here that you're not pushing down right on the kneecap. So I'm just kind of just trying to push that patella inferiorly. And hers doesn't move much in that direction. And then we can look at superiorly. Okay? And I'm just comparing side to side. It's the medial to lateral movements that you're looking for that one half width of the patella. If you want to mobilize it, it's the exact same technique. You can just do, you know, a, a lateral glide in this position. If you want to use your thumbs and do it like that, that's okay too. Um, you just have to be careful about too much contact pressure. So really try to have a... Uh, you know, a lot of surface area contact rather than pushing like this, try to really have a flat, you know, flatten out your thumbs. So you can do your glides medially, um, laterally, superiorly, inferiorly. You can move up diagonally, up diagonally, down diagonally, coming down diagonally this way, and moving up diagonally that way as well. So looking at this joint, we're dealing with one surface that's convex and one surface that's concave, okay? So what do you think the convex surface is? The talus is convex, right? Just think of this dome of the talus sitting up into this mortise of the, uh, of the tibia. But what you want to do is we're going to kind of, you know, you find the tips of the malleoli, okay? So find the tips of the malleoli and come straight across. And this is essentially where that talus will be. So I'm going to take my fingers, and I'm going to kind of come right in that area here, okay? Our resting position is, what's it say, a little ten bit of plantar flexion? Yeah, like degrees. 10 degrees of plantar flexion. You don't, again, he's, it's, a, it's a very relaxed kind of position for him here. I will take my foot and hold it, and I'm just gliding inferiorly, okay? That's all I'm doing. So I'm, I'm basically taking this bone here and trying to pull it downward in this direction. When, when he dorsiflexes his ankle, the talus drops posteriorly, okay, mm. it moves posteriorly. So a dorsal glide is very simple. This is actually going to look a lot like your wrist mobilization. It's the same thing. I take the web space of my hand, 
and I wrap it around the talus. So I'm coming right over the talus, and I'm just going straight down. You want to scoot up a little bit more, okay? So his leg is off the table. So just the calcaneus is off the table. Straight arm, lock out your arm, and I'm just going straight down like that. Again, I get my hand under him. I come right over the calcaneus, over the calcaneus and under the malleoli. So it's the same, you know, again, it's the same technique, web space of my hand, and I'm basically just kind of pushing straight downward like that. The calcaneus is probably going to move with the talus, and that's okay. Subtalar distraction, all I'm doing here is I grab the, t the calcaneus. So now we're talking, what are the motions that occur at the subtalar joint? Inversion, inversion. inversion. Yeah, inversion. so pronation and supination. And then inversion and eversion is a component of those motions. So we're going to try to work on restoring inversion and eversion. But if I've had bend this knee up, just so your foot is out of the way of the camera. This is just for the camera yes, angle there. Uh, I'm basically going to just cup the calcaneus here, grab his leg, and I'm just pulling the calcaneus distally. You guys tell me what I'm doing here. I'm going to grab the calcaneus. I'm going to stabilize his lower leg. And I'm going to push that calcaneus downward. So first of all, what is this called? Lateral glide. This is called a lateral glide. Okay. And what movement would this be restoring? Inversion. 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 Excellent. I can grab the calcaneus here, and I'm just pushing straight like this. So here is my glide, like that. And I'll show you on this side too. Bend this knee up and my glide is just going to look straight like that. I, I don't do this. I don't let it invert. I come straight, and that's the tricky part of this. This is the one that you're always going to be kind of having to kind of battle this thing that you're naturally going to want to do that. Don't let that happen. Just try to really keep it straight.